When you got Rainbow, when you got into Rainbow, which is another thing, here you are coming in. Am I going to be accepted? Is the band going to accept me? You know. Well, in in the recent Rolling Stone article, just came out middle of this month in April here. Uh, the title is "I've Been Crucified," <laughs> and I have. I've been crucified. But to counteract that, when I used to do the the ragnags like you know Kerrang and all of those pit new. Uh, you know, cream and yeah. what have you, the, the rock mags of the day. You know, they said, man, you've, you've got some big shoes to fill. And I arrogantly said, I'm going to make my own footprints. I love that. And then I had to live up to my mouth, right? And I did. I made good or bad, like it or not, love it or hate it, I made my own footprints. You absolutely did. You're an artist on record, your ultimate intimate conversation with your favorite artist. And of course, if it is your first time here, that's you. Subscribe, hit the bell to be notified so you don't miss any other episodes. And as with this episode and all the others, these interviews are recorded live in our all access VIP backstage pass in Patreon. Now coming up, we have the wonderful Mr. Joe Lynn Turner. In the studio, you might remember him from Rainbow, Deep Purple. Well, Joe is back. He has a message for you with his new album out, Belly of the Beast. You're not going to want to miss this one. Don't touch that dial. It all starts now, kids. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, you did. And and like nothing, I, Ronnie and I were friends, Dio and I. We knew each other from the circuit. You know, the circuit's a small circuit. Oh, he yeah. was living up in Cortland, New York. We were all playing the same bars in, in Suffern, New York, and in the city, and in Pennsylvania, and in Connecticut. That was the circuit. You know, same with Lou Graham, with Black Sheep. You know, we, we cut our teeth. That's why I think the experience, again, is so important, because... We cut our teeth in the bars. Seven sets a night we had to play at the Joker in Suffern, New York. I'll never forget that. Seven sets. That's Can crazy. you believe? No. It's, it's singing. We were there, it's crazy. Yeah, we were there like four in the morning <laughs> to play. There could be two people in the place. It didn't matter. Different. It was fun times, man. Yeah. Not different times from then from now with Belly of the Beast. We're in two different worlds now, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, big time. Oh, everything is different. The business is different. The sound is everything is different. Everything um, back then there was a scene. Everybody connect somehow. Somebody would know somebody. Almost how yeah. you and I connected. Oh, this yeah. guy gets a pass. He's cool. Talk with him. Opens up the door. That, now it's that's exact. Yeah. You know, I think Joe Elliott just came out and said that. He said how difficult it must be for the band, the new bands to make it because of the, the state of the business. The situation that surrounds it all, the overload and saturation of thousands of bands making albums on their computer, we didn't have that. You know, it, it didn't didn't apply. So if you had the goods, you could stand out, but get get signed to a record deal. You know, and they were handing out money in those days. Now, you know, you're lucky here. Here's his his five grand. Go make a record and. We'll throw it against the wall and see if it sticks. It's lost its soul, the human connection, the touch. It's absolutely not there. Anymore. Absolutely, and, and that's really a shame. There's a lot of good talent out there now. Yeah, you know, but yeah, but what, let let me just allow me to say this, and I say this with all respect: be original, be yourselves, because everybody's copying everybody. Everybody's starting to sound homogenized. You know, it's starting to sound like, well, we got to look this way and we got to sound this way and we got to play this way. And we got, no, no, no. Be yourself. Put out something that you feel, that you believe in, and you're going to shine like a diamond in a cat's ass. Absolutely. Absolutely. You and Blackmore, you guys still talk with each other? You connect with each other? No, it's like a bad marriage, you know. Really? Bands. Yeah, I mean, I still talk to some people I've worked with and all that, but usually when you're in bands, your comrades, you're in the, in the war, you know, and you go out and you do the best you can and yeah. you make hay and then 
when it's over, it, it's not animosity or anything. I still have great love and respect for Richie. I'm disappointed in certain things he's done and said. He's disappointed in things I've done and said. But it's not that. It's just that there's really, you know, after the love is gone, you know, I mean, I think Doogie said it recently, Doogie White. He said, Blackmore, uh, what does he do? He lifts you up, he sucks your blood, and then he sets you free <laughs> to see if you can fly on your own. That's right. You I know? saw that. Yeah. He, but there's a lesson to there was a lesson to be learned from Blackmore. He really did. All most of the guys that he's worked with, he toughened us up, cultivated us. I owe a lot to Richie. I really do. Honestly, I learned a lot through him. I learned what not to be too, as Dio states many in many interviews. What who not to be and who to be. Take the best from people, leave the rest. That's so, true. Very yeah. true. I mean, you, yeah, you you had you had a relationship with him, and you know, as we get older, you know, and we put out because a lot of arguments happen with people, it's either with money or egos and all this stuff. As we get older, and you start seeing none of this really matters. You ever want to? Because you probably had some really great memories with him, fun times where you're laughing and laughing, oh, yeah. hitting elbows. Oh man, remember that time and laughing and hugging each other? Do you ever get a moment away? You know, I'm gonna pick up the phone. And give him a call. And, oh, you, you want to? Like, I had a funny memory of us. Well, I think we all have those memories inside of us, you know, whether you pick up the phone or not, both good and bad. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the respect, you know, because we've, we've been at each other's throats. I mean, when you're in a creative situation like that, it really is, it's almost worse than a marriage, a love marriage. Uh, wife, husband, wife type of thing or whatever, a romantic marriage, because that creativity is on the line. Well, I think it should go this way. Well, you think it should go that way. And it's like, you know, so we've had our battles, but some of the things that, for example, he said when it came to the rock and roll hall of fame, you know, and he didn't want to have anything to do with it because we were, we were never interested in awards. We didn't even want to do videos, but the, but Polydam, Polydor made us do Polygram and Polydor made us do videos. We just wanted to play live and do records. Um, so we never cared much for that. And we never cared much for the accolades of, of, of societies. We cared for the people. Mm -hmm. We were more uh, like the people's choice. If the fans loved it, that's what we wanted. That's where we wanted to shine and get their approval, you know? And um, he said something very nice and I'll paraphrase it, but he said something like, you know, uh, they asked him, why didn't you go to the rock and roll? He says, well, it's pretty obvious, you know, why I just don't care about that kind of stuff. He says, but I thought Joel and Turner should have got an award for, for the work he did on Slaves and Masters, the Deep Purple record. And I was taken aback at first because I was like, it's one of his favorite albums. You know, he really enjoyed that album. And I could see why, because I still think it's a great album. The, the, some of the fans were not ready. You know, they wanted Gillen. And it's always the same. The, the change. People are not used to change. They want to stay in a corner. They want to stay in a box. You know, and if you throw them something different, well, you don't fit. Mm -hmm. But if you, look at, if you look at it, Gillen was a replacement singer. <laughs> he was. Yeah, that's right. You know, David Coverdale was a replacement singer. I, you know, this, it's, Don Airy said one of the greatest lines. We were sitting around one day and he just said, you know, he said, I think maybe we should get like a small chateau of about 300 rooms for all the ex Deep Purple and Rainbow members. <laughs> 300 <laughs> rooms. <laughs> because there's been so many people that came through those bands. Yeah. When you look at the family tree on paper, it's insane. You know, it's really insane. And the only thing that happened was change. And each stage of the game, whether it was come taste the band, machine head, sleeves and message, it was all change. Yeah. So you have to listen to the music. That's what's important. Okay. You don't like it? Fine. But listen. Don't it's 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 not a sports team. 
You know, <laughs> even with sports teams, they do that. You know, it's like, oh, the Yankees are nothing, you know. No, dude, if the Mets are playing good this year, you got to give credit to the Mets, you know, come on. Give me the timeline of Rainbow Deep Purple. What's the whole timeline with this? <laughs> well, it was Deep Rainbow, right? I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> you got Richie and Roger from Rainbow and me. But you got Richie, Roger, John, and Ian from Purple. I mean, I was real fortunate to play in, in that lineup. Yeah. Because that's, that's, that's my machine head lineup, you know, without Gillen. And there I am fronting it. But once again, they wanted a bit more. Richie wanted a bit more commercial. He didn't want to go, go backwards. He wanted to go in that direction. And Slaves and Masters with King of Dreams and uh, Love Conquers All and a bunch of these other songs. They were commercial, but we, we came out at the wrong time. There is that. Yeah. You know, timing, as they say in comedy, is everything. <laughs> right? Well, it's the same with music. When grunge was coming out, it knocked everybody out of the box. You know what I mean? You you just you couldn't get arrested. Yeah. So so the timeline you're talking about really was I mean, you know, uh, I know I knew Rainbow was breaking up. I had a solo deal with Electra, Roy Thomas Baker, blah blah blah. I knew Purple was getting back together. In fact, I was very happy. Purple was one of my favorite bands, one of my favorite albums of all time. Machine Head. That's it. That's the album for me. You know, that's like top of the list. I practice guitar to that album because I'm a primarily guitarist. Um, I sang by accident. That's another story. Okay. Figure that out. Again, you know, miracles. It's weird. And um, for me, when, when I knew that I was the interim singer, I didn't think I was going to last a lifetime there, but I was just having a great time doing a record with, the guys that I love most, you know, what a lineup, what a position to be honored and blessed to be in one of the greatest groups of rock history. Right. Absolutely. Got crucified for it in the end, but what the hell, you know, it was worth it. You know what? It's funny. People want to crucify, you know, if the, ask them, if, if you got the job and it was offered to you, would you say, Oh no, I'm not going to do it. You know, come on. You got them there. That's just it. You know, I don't know if it's envy or jealousy or they just think I suck or whatever it is, but I could never figure it out. And I don't try to figure it out. You know, it, it's really weird. Look, it's not your cup of tea. No problem. But there's a lot of tea in the world. You know, it's somebody. That's why we have variety. That's why we have different styles. This, that, the other thing, you know, I mean, when I came out with Belly of the Beast, People were like, I don't know you could sing that. I said, are you kidding? I could throat sing if I wanted to. But thankfully, Peter Tackerman was telling me, hey, man, we're making a melodic metal album here. We're not making, you know, uh, uh, you know, Lamb of God, you know, or <laughs> come back, you know, bring it back, you know, instead of that sound, yeah. come back here. Still be Joe Lynn Turner with the edge. Turner. That was the wonderful Joe Lynn Turner. And if you want to get a hold of Belly of the Beast, links will be in our description down below. And also, you can find this episode unedited, uncut, in our all access VIP backstage pass in Patreon. We're going to be putting more videos of our conversation with Joe coming up on YouTube. So make sure you hit the bell to be notified and subscribe. Until then, kids, it's only rock and roll, and we like it. Remember, who loves you, baby? We do. Questions from Derek Shrinan. These are five questions. Okay. Oh, really? Fucking count that. Five. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Sunstorm? 